that until they are getting ready. You have already invested emotions into oneself. You have already invested resources into oneself. And you go on board to test. Yes, when you are not what? Applicable. There's no way you marry. Sickle cell anemia causes what? Lack of production of the oxygen that keep you alive. Their blood, red blood cells, are not functioning like the way they're supposed to function because they are having deficits. Instead of them to be over shaped, they are a bit spleen. And because of their spleen nature, they are not able to produce the required oxygen for your upkeep. Once such an individual falls sick and being admitted into the hospital, they take blood transfusion. And this blood transfusion is too much to the standard. They have to always be helped with oxygen. Remember, such individuals can live up to the age of 30, 35, but they can go at any time. The only medication for someone with sickle cell anemia is bone marrow transplant. And it is so expensive that not every average individual can foot it. Remember, those with sickle cell anemia, they are having bones that are not strong. So don't be surprised to meet a female or a male as a partner. They wouldn't disclose to you that they are having sickle cell and you engage them in your bedroom activity and they are telling you, please, my bones are paining me. Be very careful. Don't be so rigorous on them. You may end up hurting them. Remember, those who happen to have some conditions, most of their resources go into medication. Every now and then they have to buy a drug because they experience pains constantly. They become restless when they set in. They are always looking pale, slim, more or less like models, but you don't know what is going into their system. You need to be careful. But then, always assume that you can live and live the life that you want to be, provided society that we live with accept the fact that we are unique in our own way. Some will say you don't live long. You can't live the last span, let's say, from the age of zero to the age of 70 that each and every individual aspires for. But you can equally live it. You need to understand who you are, what you came with, and do what is good for the body and not what others are defining for you. If you do what is good for the body, why can't you live? But the painful aspect is that you can take care of them, use your resources on them, and they end up dying at a point that they're supposed to help you as a mother or a father. So some parents, because of that, will think, Please, it's so demeaning, it's so insulting for you to describe someone that Why must you say that? They are your case. And they never bought it. They took it from you. Just that. That gene is not dominant in you. And it is dominant in them. Accept them and go with them. Care for them. They will grow. Are you God? We are not God. But we don't know. We have another condition that is genetic in nature. We call it erythroblastosis. Erythroblastosis. In normal terms, we call it blood incompatibility. Blood incompatibility. This blood incompatibility is so common in us. There are instances a lady or a woman will get conceived, and the woman will just get up the conception within a week or two. Once they sense they are conceived, within a month, yo, Abesi, within a month, away. It's a condition that sensitizes the woman's system. When a man and a woman conjugate and they know, they know the gamut and they are not compatible with that of the woman. The woman's system has something called anti antigens. They are called antigens and they develop antibodies. That serves as a defense mechanism to protect you from any foreign material in the system. So when the man donates the garment into the woman's system and they are not compatible, it sensitizes the woman's system, and we call that sensitization. It means a foreign material is here. A woman may be lucky, and the first pregnancy will stand, and you give birth successfully. But the subsequent ones, nothing will occur. Anytime at all you get conceived, 
you get miscarriage. Some of them will describe such a miscarriage as being caused or attributed to what? other people in your family. And who are those people? Most grown men and women in the family. The old lady there, how can an old lady give you miscarriage? Yes, we are not saying uh, spirituality is not there. It is there. But don't be quick to attribute your miscarriage to what? An old lady in your family. Who doesn't know anything? It could be as a, as a result of what? The blood incompatibility. Why must we be quick to judge? Know yourself. And sometimes, when they are ready to marry and they go and check, and it shows that, yeah, indeed, they are incompatible. What do we do? We end up saying that. Let's get out of our lanes. But you go with emotional pain. I had a friend who went on board to have an affair with a woman. I even went to their home. I took rice with palm nut soup, one of my best. After eating, I vowed with the lady and we were so close. So when I was contesting for Grassland UCC then some years back, I was campaigning I met this lady, thinking she was a friend of mine because she was dating my own friend. I waved. She ignored. I was so shocked. So said, what is happening? I picked a phone call, my friend. Ah, boss. I said, mama, I don't understand what the yenshia mean. So, as a curious learner, let me go and ask my friend at his workplace, what the Yenshia mean? When I got there, he divulged that he and the lady are not compatible. So they cannot marry. And he cared less, but the lady cared more about it. Because she thought she has wasted her time with someone that she cannot live the whole life of her with. Mind you, don't take it to your heart. Who even asked you to go and check in the first place? Yes, it's for precautions. But who even said that thing will come into your life? Who said that thing will come into your life? If you have been so curious and you went to check and it's going against you, then keep it and take it, manage it, and live with that. Don't be angry with anyone. It is biological in nature. It's genetic in nature. You never cost it. Feel free and move on. Maybe God, God will shine correctly on you, you find the one that is compatible with you, you live with the person, you give birth to healthy children, and you move your way. Don't get angry so quick. There's another one called Huntington Korea. Huntington Korea. It's also a biological defect. Who starts from the brain? An aspect of the brain is being tortured genetically. That gives you the inability to talk the way we talk. When you are talking, you have a shaky body, a shaky mat. Sometimes when it gets so intense, you can't move the way you're supposed to move. When they are walking, it's more or less they are dancing as zone two. But remember, don't mistake that one to be cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is just that they jerk. But when they are talking, you don't see the jerky or the shaky in terms of their mat. This one, when they are walking sometimes, from one stage to the other, they can turn 360. When I say they can turn 360, they can wind, wind, wind at one place before they take one step. It never cost it. It's true biological factors. And when it becomes intense again, you cannot even talk. You become speechless. You can only show using gestures. When they are eating, they may even mix their mouth. Because when the hand is going, it will be shaky this way. And the food will hit the, uh, what do you call it? The jaw or sometimes your cheek. It's normal. It's normal. You need to get caregivers just at your place so that they help you out of the situation. Some get on board to marry because they can reproduce. But how many ladies in Ghana will accept that? Unless when you are well dusted, you have plenty of money. Like Kwame Despite. That one day they know you die early, so they will inherit. If you are coming from the village and you have only cattle as your property and your only source of food is fufu, the young fufu, they will look at you in the other way. Look at him. He doesn't even care of himself. He wants to propose to me. But they are equally human. Who knows? Always have who knows tomorrow. 
tomorrow. Once you don't know tomorrow, they are equally good and we can live with them. But we live in a system that is so corrupt in terms of our minds, that is so non-uniform in our terms of uh, living. We try to marginalize such individuals. But they are part and parcel of us. They make up the population of our country. And our GDP, uh, GDP, when they are sharing their part of it, they will never subtract them from us. They even take bigger portion of it, if you don't know. Why must they take big, big portion? When they fall ill, we pay money into them. The NHIS levy that you pay, they take much of it. So why wouldn't you welcome them? Nurture them so that they won't fall ill for us to be paying all the time. But you don't know. Their costs are indirect. They are indirect in our lives. Aside these biological conditions that cause stress to the unborn and the one that you are giving birth to, we have other environmental. One of them is the maternal age. Yes, you are 23. A gentleman has walked into your life. Because you have not seen him driving a car, you are not my match. Think about Debi Debi Ebeye Ye. Remember, you can keep waiting. When you get to the age of 30, you are getting or inching close to the age of 40 like that. And at the age of 45, you are off-road. Children that, with, or that are born with Down syndrome, they are coming from women who has given birth after 30. Or who have given birth before 20. So when you are 18 and you give birth, your chances of giving birth to a Down syndrome child is higher. And when you are 30 and above, your chances of giving birth to a Down syndrome child is higher. So why are we waiting? Some will say, I'm waiting for the right time. Make the current wrong time right tomorrow. Some will say, I'm waiting for the right man. Make the wrong the right. We have no right anywhere. Marriage or relationship is about adaptation. When you are able to adapt to the pain and the condition of the person, you move on. But remember, not everyone can adapt. We have extremities. And when there are extremities, you allow the system to operate. So the age of the mother is very, very important that we must consider when we talk about conditions that can kill the smooth progress of a child. Before I continue my lecture with the external factors or the environmental factors that can go against the unborn child or the child that you are giving birth to, let me announce to you the radio lines of which you can get to us. You can reach us, whether WhatsApp or phone call, through 0503-923158. 0503-923158. You can equally give us SMS, simple message, or WhatsApp through the same line. We are also live on the university website, www.uew.edu.gh. www.uew.edu.gh. You can also reach out through Facebook, Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM. Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM. These are the channels through which you can reach us. Wherever you are in Ghana, just hit your Facebook live, Radio Windy Bay. 98.3 FM or the investing main webpage www.uew.adu.gh Let's continue. Aside the maternal age, we have maternal disease. Maternal disease that can be transferred onto the child that is yet to be given. The maternal diseases are too many one of them is rubella. Others will say German measles. And in our local language, we call it intobro. They are coming from the mothers, which can be transferred onto the child. And they need to be treated. Such things can cause deformities to the child's body and even go on board to help hamper or to impede on the development of the brain portions of the child. So as parents, when you have certain things, try to work on them to make sure they don't cause 
havoc to your developing child in you or after you give birth to them. Another maternal disease that can go against the child is syphilis. Syphilis is a painless sore that is found around our genitalia. Syphilis is so common in women than men. Why is it so common in women? Because they have a wider sexual organ. Their sexual organ is so wide that it is there. And syphilis can live in a human being for 10 years. It can go on dormancy within you, but you wouldn't know. So when you are being diagnosed with syphilis, try to work it out. You see the sore on your body or that portion of your vagina. It's not painful, but it is itchy. It itches you and you'll be scratching and it's so sweet. Continue scratching. Don't go and get it out of you. It can be with you for 10 years. So if you are giving birth to three, three children within the 10 years, maybe your spacing is two, two years. How many children are like that? That is what? Four or five. So all of them will be having syphilis. And who gave them? You, the mother. Go and work on it and get it out of you. They can be with you for 10 years without knowing. In the males, you see at the tip of your penis, you see some small, small balloons on it. When you are, in, uh, you, you are wearing your bossa shorts, it is itching you and you'll be scratching. Sometimes at the, 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 uh, the small gap in between the tip of the penis and the longitudinal part, you see it there and you'll be scratching, fondling it, and you are happy about it. In court, you are stupid. You don't know. It's syphilis. Go and work on it. Get it out of you. So women can contract this particular syphilis through sexual intercourse. And the fluid that comes can give you that. Sometimes you can get this fluid through kisses. Intensive kisses that will leave trace of what? Cut in you. Are you biting yourselves? Ask yourselves. If there's a mark or a sore around your mouth, and you kiss, and that particular was semen enters your system. You have contracted it. So some people have devised strategies. They don't even want to go there. They go in defensive mood, protecting themselves. So deep kissing is one of the reasons why you get syphilis, but you don't know. Aside sexual intercourse, that is one condition that gives you syphilis. And one thing that is called... HIV, HIV, human immuno or immune virus. Take this. AIDS is one of the things that can go against your unborn child. But then, technology has moved to the fact that, and science has made us understand that we can get care of AIDS even when your father and father, your father and mother are positive. They will give you some medications through the pregnancy. And 72 hours to the bed, they will give you another medication so that you give birth to a child without that. Because they have to de-unite de you from the child. And when they give the medication, you can give birth to the child to avoid mother-to-child transmission. But HIV can be with you, but you will not die, provided you take the medication. Malaria kills faster and, uh, 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 and even take life more than any other thing, than HIV. So when we are HIV positive, live a good life, and you can live the life that you want to. Continue to be taking the drug, ART, antiretroviral therapy. Be doing, visiting your clinic, but because of stigma, we don't go, and we keep it to ourselves. We end up spreading to other people. Very wicked creatures. Why must we do that? Don't be wicked because you heard it from someone you perceive to be a male or female. You want to also share to other people wrongly. If you do that, it will go against you. Your God will not even forgive you. He will punish you. Why must you do that? Are you not godly? You say you are a Muslim, but you don't think about God. If you understand that you are godly, then it is caused by God. And live with that. Don't go and spread. I had a friend who is a nest tutor currently in Ghana. I wouldn't try to even give the location of himself. But he's a tutor in one of the nursing training colleges in Ghana. He earmarked a lady that he wanted to marry. This lady, 
When the guy came to UCC to do his degree, some years back, the lady became a utility player on campus. He jumped from one man to the other and contracted HIV without the husband's notice. When he also left campus to the house during vacation period, he thought he has left a pale-like virgin woman. He also went to consume without protecting and also had the HIV. So he was there and the lady went to hospital and they diagnosed her with HIV being positive. She came home to call the husband to the clinic for a test to be done. He also tested positive. This guy became mad. <coughs> he wanted to take the lady on, but the havoc has been caused. What else do you want to do? You just live with a woman and pro pro uh, protect yourself through what? ART. So they are, they are both positive. They all go for uh, what you call a checkup and take their ART at a time, but not in the community they live in. They go to another community in the northern part of Ghana so that the others in the community will not know. They will tell you we are going for a checkup. It's normal. Checkup is normal. So you don't know. It's a disguised way in doing that to avoid stigma. Stigma is what kills people and not the condition itself. When they identify you are having the condition, people will run away from you. Whilst in my level 300 in 2013 in UCC, I was at the public health unit in Cape Coast, Technic, uh, Cape Coast Teaching Hospital. A woman I live in a community that I never knew she had it. Walk in. So another friend of mine came. The lady didn't know me, or the woman didn't know me, because I wasn't close to her. She never even knew I was living in the same community with her. But when my friend came to pick my motorbike, he asked. And on, ignorant on my side, I said, oh, here is for public health, and these are the things that we do. And it was on Thursday. Thursday are the days for that clinical attention for those with uh, HIV AIDS. When I said HIV, I said, ah, that is the reason why this woman saw her and she was hiding. And I said, which woman? That a woman that we all live with. I said, me, I don't know her. I only attend to people when they come. It's because of the stigma, the mark we give. All those that I knew who have lived with a woman in terms of fianceship or marriage, they've all died except the woman because she never disclosed to them that she's HIV positive. And they also live a life that they didn't know and they end up dying from the virus. But she's living and attend hospital every month on Thursdays. Her kids are not aware of her condition. But she's having a chronic sore on her that is not dying. It's not because it's diabetes. It's because of the HIV. But no one knows. I, as I said here, know. And I just speak with her. She knows very well I'm aware, but no one knows. And her own kids are not aware. If they happen to be aware, they all run away from her. And I will never and ever disclose her status to anyone. I'm just saying, when you even get to know that someone is positive, keep it to yourself. That is the professional aspect of the ethics in the work. By the Okromat in the community, hey, yeah, men call her or ace. Kwasia wa kenewi. We yi na mewi. Owu wi a na wa bejina wa ni mobo mobo. It's one of the educational implications. Don't disclose. Don't, uh, don't disclose or don't let out the status of someone to the public. Know how to do that. Even the person who's having the condition, you must take the person through therapy before you tell the positive status to him or her. Otherwise, they will go psychologically insane. They can be mad, not me. Denier, not me. How can I? And they will start becoming depressed. When they are depressed, suicidal ideations come in. The tendency of killing themselves will be higher. Why? You cost them. You the one who disclosed cause some. You take them through the processes. They will deny at the early stages. Along the line, they will accept it and live with it and go through their medication. We have some women and men who say, China did take alcohol. Alcohol is very good in your life, but very dangerous to the health of your child that you are yet to give birth to. Today, I know many of you will go for Valentine with your partner. Savannah will be taken. Irish cream will be taken. Smirnoff, the woman favorite, will be taken. Shisha is another one. 
So, so funny. Students of UW. Kings and queens. Go to Abuajua and Ifufu. Behind DVLA. Fufu and palm soup. Take that one and go and rest. Don't go and take Sesha. When you open your mouth, then you see it's like a chinry. Your nose will become what? Muchia. In coat. Don't do that. Do you know the complications of this? Go and look for those who have smoked for so many years. And look at their fingers. It's cutting. They are not what? Lepatic. But because of the incessant, frequent smoking, they are having defects in their body. Why is it that those who manufacture cigarettes, things that we smoke, they will write, smoking is harmful to your health. And they will show the parts of your body that are going against. But young men and women today, they take we. Because when they take the we, it increases what? Their libido for sexual satisfaction. Yes. Sex is not about what? Marathon. You take it and go engage the lady, she'll be happy. But whatever that you have taken into your system can go against whatever that you are having in the womb of a woman. Remember, if you smoke as a woman, during pregnancy or after pregnancy or you smoke as a man and conjugate with a woman it can go against the child that you are going to bring forth they can have neurodevelopmental disorders and one of them is what autism one of them is what intellectual disability one of them is what attention deficit hyperactive disorder ADHD. The child is here today. You see him the next minute, he's over there. He can't sit at one place. Why? Because you, the father or mother, have taken something external in your system. Why must you take that particular thing? Why must you smoke that shisha? We is not bad. It is taken in moderation. We is medicinal, but we abuse it. A substance that we abuse. When it abuse, it goes against you. Why? Not only your body, but any child that will come forth from you as a mother or a father. If you go to Cape Coast, walk around in the area, the women who smoke, you see them and they resemble males. Why? Because it's like they don't even have flesh on their body. Their speech, when they are talking, they talk like men. Why? Because their system has been changed through the smoking. Why must you do that? And if you go to what? We live here. Go to the beaches in the night. The Rastafara. Everywhere you pass, they smoke. Please, don't inhale what? The smoke. Always cover your nose when we are walking around the beaches. It's more dangerous than the one who is smoking it. When you inhale it, it will go against your, your heart. It will go against your system. And when you bring sperms out, it is filled with what? Smoke. That can go against the formation of a child. Infant mortality rate is higher because of smoking. So women, don't crave for smoke when you are pregnant. Alcohol too. Don't drink it. The consequence of alcohol is that you may give birth to a child with fetal alcohol syndrome. Fast. Such a child, when you see their look, they appear to be stretching their eyes in order to see things, but that is their natural makeup. They are not stretching the eye. That is how they look like. And they are mentally retarded. When they are walking, they are flexible. Not because they don't have bones. It's because you have fused their system with alcohol. We have children that we are unable to control in the classroom, and you don't know why. Their parents, go and check. One of the parents might be someone who has taken alcohol. Father or mother might have been a smoker. And they are very difficult to control in the class. So teachers are suffering today. Teachers are suffering. Not because they are not good. It's because we have children who have been fused with their parents. Whose parents have what? Made their system so polarized using alcohol or drug. Or using we, cocaine. Ah. Mi wubia na me raho. E DNT ena ebe kwa kwa nom sa diwe. A di ebe seo. E DNT ena obe nom.
Some of you will say, yes, you take it because your mind is not well. Please, you can't do everything possible for yourself on this earth. Once things are not going well in your life, know who you are, what you are, what you are doing. Don't put anything that will go against your total life. We have less than 10 minutes to go. We are waiting for your calls and messages. When they come, we we'll attend to them. Let us maximize the 10 minutes that is remaining. Women, when they are pregnant, they take drugs. Some are not recommended. Those that are not recommended, it can go against you. Some women will say, I want the child to be fair. And you are dark as a woman. Your husband is never fair. How do you expect a fair child? Or cotton one woman. You will come forward with the same or a similar child. It's only on the extreme situations that you can have a Ghana Bruni in your family. That is albino. You want your child to be having hair. And you go and buy a drug that you take to produce the hair within. Those who manufacture, they know the side effect. You are not hairy. You are bald as a father. And you crave for hair for your child. How possible? How possible? Don't be doing that. Take what is prescribed by the doctors and take that one. Some of them too, they crave for things that are not nutritious. They are not food-like. And such things are called pica. That behavior is called pica. Some chew soap. Others take soil. Or clay, which we call shire. The women, please, it has no nutritional value in you. Don't take it. Never and ever think about it. When you take shire, and you, it doesn't digest. It only accumulates itself around your abdomen. Unam na uyema ye kusu. And yes, we did be a sad be an funa in in nymphaswana wood in and na kwada on because system ni nima de kra ewoho in ji on to me ye wejuma naka. Some men too they will take snuff. Asra. After taking they'll be hitting their head like they are mad. Bang, bang, bang. Please, in quote, why are you hitting yourself? Are you in quote insane? Something that you take and you hate yourself. Some of them, they take it before they engage their woman in sex. So that it powers them. But remember, your, your, the, the, within your head, there's this watery content. When you inhale, it goes straight there and accumulates. When you are grown, it starts paining you. You'll be having migraine. That goes against you. A call is in. We are waiting. Mention your name, your department, and the program. The question follows and I will answer. The lines are still around with us. 0503-923158. 0503-923158. You can equally WhatsApp. You can go to Facebook and do a chat there. We shall reach out to you and then give a response to whatever query that you have for us. I'm well out for your question. Mention your name, bring your department, and your question comes, and I shall answer. Thank you very much. I think I'm Deborah. All right. From counseling and psychology department. Okay. Level. Please. Level. 300. Level 300. All right. Please, I want to ask that a man of taking alcohol. Mm -hmm. And then before having sex, then that child, is it possible that that child can be suffering from sexual alcohol syndrome? And when it's happening, how can we help that child? 
Mm. Uh, thank you very much, Debbie, with your question from Counseling Psychology Level 300. I think you have done this course and you are still learning. Yeah, we are still in a learning process. Yes, when you take anything in you, the body tries to digest. When the body digests and it has a new trend, that is good it will use. Those that are not good and cannot be what? Uh, how do I even put it? And cannot be taken out of the system. It gets filled with those that you have there. So let's say the manufacturer of spermatozoa. It runs through your blood. And systems work for it to work. And if the sperm is being infused with trace of alcohol. And the man donates into the woman's what? Uh, vulva. To walk through the service to meet an egg. Remember that the sperm there is alcohol infused. And it's going to fill with an egg that is not alcohol infused. But now they become one. So that particular zygote there is having a trait of the father. And the trait of the father is having alcohol content. And the child will come with it. So when the child comes and you find that child in class. And you identify that the family of the child are alcoholic in nature. Such an individual is going to be managed. Remember it can give what we term as neurodevelopmental disorder. And the neurodevelopmental disorder are not killed. We can't cure them. We only manage them. So you only manage the situation in the class so that he or she can also realize a particular part of his dream in life. Thank you very much. Another caller, you mention Hello. your name, you give your department, and I shall answer your question. Thank you. Hello. Hi, my brother. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, my dear. Please, my name is Richard Lee from political science department. All right. Please, uh, I want to know, do we have any measures to control chromosoma uh, abnormality? And then, uh, second question, what is the cause of clan fetal syndrome? Thank you very much, Richard Ajay from Political Science Department, my own group that I teach on Thursdays. Yes, when we talk about the chromosoma abnormalities that I hammer on earlier, and one of them is the clan filter. When the chromosomes are being combined, it is not deducible or observable by any individual. It is biological in nature. And remember the almighty God that we all serve is so smart that he will not let us know when all these things occur. We only see them when the child is brought out. Why is it that we cannot see? It's because human beings' minds are not always clear. If you get to know when the egg and the sperm meat, you will terminate it. Immediately, you will block it. So God will not let you know. Even until today, we don't even need the very, the very moment the sperm meet the egg. A woman gets to know she's pregnant after a week of conception or when she mixes her next menstrual cycle. So we can't know. We can't know. And with a climb filter, it is what? Chromosomal abnormality. That brings up. You have extra chromosome. Instead of you to have an X, Y, you have X, Y, Y. I would mean X, Y. You have an X, Y, Y. It means you have an extra male in you. That makes you barren. That makes you unusual. Oh, sorry, this one X, X, Y rather. X, X, Y. You have what? A female part in you. That female part is, your breast become developed. If you are a tree person, meaning you are shapeless. That's their make. They are, they are having limbs or their hands are too unusually tall or long than the normal individual. And you cannot give birth. A brother from... All right, all right, all right. This brother never gave the department, but he greeted. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Mahama. My problem is that I really understand the Down syndrome. Can you please? I really don't understand. Okay. The Down syndrome. Can you please revisit it for me? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And again, it's the same question that you brought. All right. Down syndrome is a chromosomal abnormality that occurs at the 21st pair of the chromosomes. Remember I said in class and on radio today that each normal human being possesses 46 chromosomes. 23 from mother, 23 from father. And... The 23 
22 of them are autosomals. They are our life chromosomes. And the last one is the gender chromosome. That determines whether you are male or female. So when they are combining, they are combining, and they get to the 21 pair, and so we to come to, an extra one appears, and it is short. That extra one gives abnormality. And the abnormality is what we term as Down syndrome. And another name for the Down syndrome is Trisomy 21. Another name for the Down syndrome is Mongolism. Mongolism. So that is it. Thank you very much. Another caller is on board. Bring your name, your department, and your question follows. Thank you. Hello, Doug. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. This, my name is Wisdom Konya. Okay, Wisdom. Department of Counseling Psychology. Yeah, I'm all yes. Please, uh, uh, what kind of age of a man have effect on a child? Yeah. Not like the woman we were talking about. It and does. So, it does. What will, what will be the cause? Of uh, a man that uh, medically you are diagnosed okay, and that the woman too is okay, but your child is not. What may be the cause of that? Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for your question. Yes, the age of a father is also particular to the success of a good child, but it's not always the case. Men as old as 100 years can still produce uh, fertile sperm, that word or strong sperm that can fertilize an egg, but not always the case. Remember, the hormones that work to nourish the spermatozoa, it goes by age. Once you grow, it also reduces. And when the hormones cannot nourish the sperm to swim the way they're supposed to swim, you can have a low sperm count. Again, you can give it to a child that is also more like, like, like old, but they are young because they are coming from an old man. Are you with me? So it's good for you. Your productive years is in between the ages of what? 20 to 50. 60, why must you be giving birth to new children? It's a time for you to reflect and take care of them and enjoy your money till you go on pension. You don't give birth to pension children. It will give you psychological torture. Because instead of you to use the money to buy good cars and go on holidays, refresh your mind, and think about reflecting in life, you are rather caring for chop money and the rest. By 50, your child should be able to also live independent life after establishing them using education. And again, your next question, if I, I had it clear, that, uh, have I forgotten just so soon? Um, We have far spent our time in terms of the radio lecture this morning, but I'll make it a point to squeeze a bit of Radio Windy Bay's commercial period for attending to questions online. That is a Facebook page. Yeah. Kantumbi Ibrahim uh, Zongo Winneba. Yeah, we are, we are also seeing you from the studios of Radio Windy Bay. What step is taken to educate local people on the use of drugs when pregnant? This, is, this question is coming from Goku Johannes. Uh, PD1. Uh, this one, we, hear p we, we need peer education over here. And we have public health nurses going around. Our problem is not every woman will have the time to listen to such educational programs. And I'm happy you are doing counseling psychology. And it is good for you. It is good for you. You go out there and preach the gospel. 
In your family, some women may be taking concoctions that are not recommended. And you tell them the consequence of that. Some women may resist. But be on it and don't be angry when they come at you at heart. You can do your small way to make sure they change from that mindset. And this person to bright. I don't I want to know if our brain can affect your brain. Thank you. One is also a genetic thing, it has a trait of that. Our brain is about a pigment melanin in you, which is when it, you have it less in the system. It takes away the component that will make your skin or your color the normal way and rather project you in a lighter way. In a lighter way. But we can read more about it. We don't have a direct, it can have an indirect effect on the workings of your brain that we are not immediately aware of. So you can read more about it and let us share the knowledge when we meet in class. Thank you very much. In as much as we have no questions pending through the phone calls, the WhatsApps, or the Facebook page, or the university website, I say we're able to cater for the biological factors that go against or that impede the development of the child within and without. We also spoke about the environmental factors that impede on the smooth development of a child within and without. And we hammered on the genetics, we hammered on the chromosoma, we hammered on what? The drugs that are not recommended. We usually hammered on what? The maternal age. So with the maternal age, we need to be careful. We need to be careful. Someone asked whether we need to consider that. Yes, you need to consider. We have young men today who don't want to work hard and make money. They are looking for sugar mummies. The person is off-road at the age of 45. So don't expect any good child to come. Some of you will say, Gift Auntie was 40-something. She gave birth. If you know the medications Gift Auntie went through, you know even try to say. And the kind of money she spent on that, you don't have the quarter of it. So don't always try. To be like someone who you are not that person, if you do that, you may be cutting a road that is strong in your life. On the basis of this, we thank the Almighty Allah for giving us the opportunity to come here and speak to you on issues regarding psychology of human development and learning, specifically threats to prenatal, peri, and postnatal development in our lives. On this basis, I end the lecture for this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much as well, Dr. Inusa Mahama from the Department of Educational Foundations. University of Education, Winneba. So having done justice to the topic at hand this very morning, all we say is thank you once again, and God richly bless you. Remember, he made a wonderful presentation on the topic, Threats to Prenatal.